Janesh Murjani, I'm very happy to have uh, President Enterprise and Public Sector with us at DSCI today. Welcome, Janesh. Thank you, Dr. Bajaj. As you know, Data Security Council of India is an entity which was created by NASCOM primarily to focus on data protection. And we've been around for the last uh, nearly five years. Uh, we have created a lot of best practices for security as well as privacy protection. And we have worked with the government on public advocacy matters also. And uh, over this period, we have discovered that cyber security is an important element of yes. uh, data security. You can't protect your networks if you're attacked from afar. <clears throat> so the attacks can come from anywhere, and we have to be alive to the changes which are taking place in the marketplace. Cyber security is an important element. And just to set the scene for our discussion, I will say that uh, uh, DSCI uh, created a report on uh, securing our cyber frontiers, which was released in the month of April uh, last year. Correct. And thereafter, we have engaged with the government. Uh, it has been uh, taken on board by the Home Ministry, as well as by the National Security Advisor. And uh, we have been instrumental in creating a joint working group to promote public-private partnership with the government. And I'm happy to report that the government has accepted that they alone cannot secure the critical information infrastructure in the country. And that the private sector has to be a partner in the government's efforts to have uh, to strengthen cyber security in the country. And uh, as we all know that cyber security is an important element of national security. National security depends more and more on cyber security today. Yes. So it is with this background that uh, uh, we are partnering with the Cisco essentially to develop this new uh, security leadership uh, development program. So I'd like to welcome you and uh, to thank you for uh, being a partner with DSCI. Thank your, you. Uh, request your initial comments on the same. Thank you very much. It's actually a, uh, a privilege to be here today and to be uh, associated with the work that DSCI is doing. I think DSEI has been at the forefront of thought leadership around cybersecurity and the advisory role that you're uh, playing uh, with the government and that's now reflected in the formation of the uh, joint working group and uh, I have absolutely no doubt that uh, with all of the work that has been done and that, that will be done jointly with industry, uh, we will come out uh, at the end with, uh, with a set of outcomes that helps secure the nation from a cybersecurity perspective as well as uh, sets the, the standards in terms of thought leadership for industry to follow as various uh, different institutions look to protect their own assets and look to protect their own enterprises or, or uh, other assets that they might have. So it's in fact a privilege uh, to be here today. Uh, Cisco is also very proud to be playing uh, a role together with you uh, in, that, uh, in the formation and that, uh, the shaping of those thoughts and, uh, and recommendations and very proud to be partnering with you in the security program that we are, uh, we are jointly launching today for the benefit of industry broadly. Thank you very much, Janish. Uh, I would like to understand from you that how you think this kind of a partnership will benefit the industry. Sure. We are looking at some of the specifics, the way the industry is uh, responding to the changes in the marketplace, uh, the way the requirements are coming up. Uh, from both the user side as well as from the government compliance requirements. So how do you think this kind of a partnership will promote uh, more security for the organization, make it easier for them to implement programs? Sure. So actually this program is and uh, this partnership is a very, very unique partnership because it's a first of its kind partnership between uh, between DSCI and Cisco and between industry and, uh, and uh, industry bodies. Uh, around cyber security efforts that uh, that are happening in the marketplace today. It's also very unique because we find ourselves in a very unique position in the market itself in terms of the trends that we see in security. You mentioned some of the uh, issues around uh, compliance, some of the issues around uh, the regulatory environment. There are also changes taking place from the standpoint of technology. Cyber attacks are getting much more sophisticated and from the standpoint of, of users, we're seeing a number of industry uh, industry trends around the consumerization of IT, for instance, and themes like bringing your own device to work, or themes around mobility and, and the power that you have with, with the smartphone and what you can do with that smartphones or tablets or other mobile devices. 
we're seeing increasing adoption of applications around social and mobile applications. And we're seeing a complete transformation of the data center with cloud and cloud-based applications and virtualization of the infrastructure that resides within the data center. Each of these themes that we see in the marketplace today presents its own set of complexities in terms of security. And really all of them happening at the same point in, and convergence, it's really the, the tsunami of, uh, of all of these coming together that, uh, that really requires us to have a complete rethink around the entire security paradigm. But along the way, uh, we've, uh, we've completely protected various, uh, various different uh, infrastructures for some of our customers, looking not just at the network side, but also at the application, also at the content, and looking at it from a holistic perspective. Uh, complete security architecture, if you will. And I think uh, the importance of those trends, those trends around BYOD, around cloud, around mobility, around social mobile applications, increasingly uh, the industry is coming around to the view that the only way that you can protect it is from an intelligent set of network services. And that plays directly into the, um, into the heart of what Cisco has been doing for a very long time. So with Cisco as the industry leader in this space, and with the thought leadership from DSCI, uh, I have absolutely no doubt that this program being a joint program between the, between the two uh, entities can deliver the best of benefits to, uh, to industry players, to various uh, constituents of yours, to various uh, accounts and customers of ours. And more importantly, I think this program is an inclusive program. It's not something that, uh, that we're going to go talk about and, and, uh, and do in a, you know, in a room and there's smoke in a black box and there's a set of uh, recommendations that emerges. It's a very consultative program. It involves participation of industry. Uh, it involves conversations around some of the challenges that CISOs are facing and, uh, and conversations about ways and best practices in which those, those challenges can be addressed. Uh, so it really harnesses the power of all. It, ha it harnesses the power of the industry, it harnesses the power of DSCI and the power of Cisco to really come up with a set of, uh, of opinions and recommendations and practices that can be used in the industry to protect, uh, to protect themselves. Sure, Janesh. I think you have covered the entire gamut of challenges with the, with the industry is facing and that way perhaps the entire country as well. Uh, the threat landscape uh, is changing very, very rapidly and we see advanced persistent threats which are dominating the marketplace again. And every organization is concerned about that. Yes. And we have seen the way uh, technology <coughs> jargon has also metamorphosed itself into several names over the last five, seven years. Sure. There were parameterization, then network uh, deparameterization, then reparameterization, and now we are talking of a security architecture, which again depends upon the uh, network. I think if you look at uh, our country today, we have more than 120 million uh, internet users. And uh, I was seeing a report last week that uh, 50 million uh, smartphones are there now. Correct. And that the number is increasing very, very rapidly. So we will be the third largest we currently are, and the numbers will be very large in terms of internet users in the country. So my concern is that we have vulnerable platforms, and we know that these applications are also vulnerable. We know that the way banking is conducted and the users are not aware about security issues. They go and uh, uh, replicate the same application on the more vulnerable platforms. Yes. So smartphones deploying same operating systems and same applications are taken over, which are known to be vulnerable. Correct. So are we spreading more vulnerability all over the country? And of course, uh, this is not country only because it is a global connection. Yes. So a, a virus or a, or a threat vector can be transmitted over the network from any other place. Correct. So it is the similar challenge that we face in terms of an attack coming from anywhere else. So the environment is, is something which is becoming more and more challenging. And awareness is a very, very major issue while we deploy the security technology solutions of the kind that uh, we'll be talking about in this thought leadership program. and. Uh, Perhaps uh, Cisco, as I mentioned earlier also, uh, Cisco is taken as a network company, not as a security leader. So many of these issues, uh, how you think uh, uh, you would like to promote through this particular program, that how it will go to uh, mitigate many of the risks which many of the organizations are facing. Sure, and, and actually, you know, as, as you were, we were talking earlier, I think you're right, it is a common misperception around, uh, around Cisco's leadership and security. Uh, but we are in fact the largest security uh, vendor in, in the country today. 
uh, from the standpoint of the of the user and from the standpoint of um, thinking about the the uh, experience that the user goes through to your point most users ideally don't want to think and worry about security right and it is a very difficult and complex set of things uh, things for them they care more about the experience and they care more about the convenience and the expectation is that the security yeah. aspects will be taken care of at the same time it's a very well defined principle in the security uh, domain that the best security comes from a set of well informed users who know what they are doing and who actually takes appropriate security precautions themselves so the way we have to approach this is is from a from the standpoint of something that's holistic it's not just a technology uh, answer but the technology has to actually be seamless and it has to underlie every activity that those users perform in such a way that if you've got a set of well informed users that's fantastic but if you've got a set of users who aren't as well informed we have to help take the right protective measures to make sure that those users can still experience the benefit and the convenience of all of the technology trends that are taking place in the industry today but not have to worry about the security um i'll give you a simple example you you mentioned a lot of you know jargon that gets used in the industry and you're absolutely right so let's perhaps try and you know use a simple uh, illustration let's say there's a, a user uh, it could be any particular uh, user who's sitting with his or her mobile device it could be a, any 3g uh, enabled or uh, or any other smart uh, device on any platform and the person is sitting in a coffee shop and has is accessing an enterprise application but that enterprise application is sitting in a public cloud because the enterprise has adopted uh, public cloud solutions and it's a third party software as a service application so if you think about that that engagement or that interaction from the standpoint of the enterprise user or the enterprise uh, ciso that interaction or that transaction is happening on an application that the ciso does not control because it's a third party saas application sitting in a data center that the ciso does not control accessed over a network that the ciso does not control in a location that the ciso does not control using an endpoint or a device that the ciso does not control there is no aspect of that transaction that the ciso controls yet the ciso is entirely responsible for the security of that transaction and the technology solutions which are thrown at him that also ciso does not control nor does he perhaps understand I exactly in many instances so i think uh, the approach that cisco has taken to that is is really what we talk about in the context of this security architecture which is uh, which is context aware security so if we put the tools in the hands of the ciso to say let that user when when that user is in that kind of environment give the user access to only certain kinds of of information only certain kinds of things but when that user comes into your enterprise they have access to everything uh, that's one one simple example or it could be context oriented uh, where you could say that you could be looking at the content that that user is actually exchanging with that application and certain kinds of content may be permitted other kinds of content may not be permitted uh you could actually have technology that underlies that endpoint that automatically uh, encrypts and protects some of those uh, those conversations seamless to the user so in many respects the user may not even know the security uh, the security that underlies that yet the ciso can rest completely comfortable knowing that that transaction is uh, is 100% secure and it's a combination of technology as well as uh, informing and educating users of course see we have uh, developed a security framework uh, which we've been uh, working on for the last 3 uh, to 4 years and it's a set of practices which is uh, looking at security in the form of a number of disciplines yes not in terms of bulky documentation <coughs> and a certification because certi certification perhaps can give you a peace of mind from the view point of compliance with the law correct but not when it comes to your customers or your shareholders they would demand or they expect uh, real security that is you prevent as many attacks as possible right and that the data is not damaged yes so our practices are essentially focused in that direction and in this partnership with cisco we hope to develop a more uh, uh, more in depth program in terms of architecture and perhaps going forward architecture which are sector specific maybe for the banking separately telecom separately and uh, so on absolutely so this is what uh, we are looking at uh making use of our frameworks and uh, looking at the way the technology is evolving and the solutions are emerging right and i think this thought leadership program we expect uh, will be a win-win situation both for dsci and uh, 
uh, Cisco mm -hmm. and uh, should go a long way in uh, meeting the requirements of the users in the country. Yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I think it actually does come down to the practices because anything you do from a security perspective at a point in time is only good at that particular point in time. At the end of the day, when from the from the standpoint of cyber security or uh, or any other kind of, of security from the standpoint of, of the infrastructure, what a user wants to know is the infrastructure that I deployed, is it yeah. doing what I expected it to do and nothing more and nothing less, yeah. correct? And while you can go and, and validate that at a point in time with a certification, really it comes down to the ongoing practices that are in place around that and technology can provide a set of solutions around the ongoing monitoring and capabilities and so forth around threat protection, around prevention against attacks and so forth. And then it comes down to a set of very effective practices uh, that have to be put in place around, uh, around the ongoing protection as well. So you're 100% uh, right in that approach and we're certainly uh, very happy to be partnering with you in that and we'll, we'll make sure that we get to the right outcomes. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm Thank sure you. it will come up with a very good program and the practices. Absolutely. Thank you and looking forward to partnering with you, Anna. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.